what is up everyone we have another day to talk about some gymnastics been doing a lot of work on this uh process of clipping everything and getting it all prepared but luckily this is all brought to you on flip now which is usa gymnastics new streaming site and they have made it very easy for me to actually put all these together so we have a lot of videos that we're going to be running through today but to begin i just kind of wanted to break down i got a couple notes that i'm going to throw your guys' way so winter cup is two days of competition the first day is a competition where you're doing the all around and the top five all arounders will make national team then you got your second day, and this is a combination of points from day one and day two. And so points are, if you are placed first on, event, on an event, you get the most points. If you place second, you get second most points. And you have that for every single event. So depending on how well you do both days, whatever your place is, after the end of two days of competition, there will be more guys selected based off the top, the top five on, um, the top five point placers excluding the all-arounders that were selected from day one so there's a lot of potential to make the national team and really to get things going you know there was a big push for usa gymnastics to incentivize start values which funny enough the only the guy that won the all-around was actually the guy that had zero bonuses whatsoever so somewhat backfired on their plan but i don't think it's necessarily a backfire because we're still gonna see you know a few select guys that are going to beat and be you know they're gonna be on that competitive level where you're trying to beat russia china japan and that's what this bonus system was incentivizing it's not saying hey we're trying to just give gifts to our best guys it's like, no, we want to, so I should break down real quick how people actually, how they came up with this bonus system so that it can be a little simpler. So last year's Olympic and Worlds, there was a score to get you into um, event finals. So if you have a score or start value that's comparable to getting you into a World or Olympic event finals, you will get a bonus. So that is part of the reason why it's so difficult for people to actually get bonuses. But if you do have a routine that is up on that level, USA Gymnastics is saying, hey, let's reward that because we want to beat Russia, China, Japan. And those are the types of routines that are going to be comparable with these big countries to get there. And so just to get any clarification out for why we have a system set up to boost start value where clean gymnastics might necessarily win. Well, guess what? Clean gymnastics still won. But I do think that this is a good start when we have a couple more years before the next Olympics to incentivize guys trying hard things, getting more comfortable, competing them in a stressful situation so that when the future comes, I don't think this will necessarily still be the case. But still, hands down to Vitaly for absolutely slaying this competition. He deserved the win by far. He beat guys that had start value bonus. So if you take that away, he beat them by even more. So just to put a whole next level of respect for Vitaly, we're going to be watching a lot of his routines today. But really what this whole bonus system has shown us is that because there's so few guys... A lot of people, the U.S. isn't necessarily ready to be snagging a bunch of Olympic medals in the all-around or individuals. There's a couple that are making some strong cases based off getting into having the bonuses just in general. But really what we've seen from last year to this year is a decrease on floor, pommel, and high bar in terms of difficulty. However, on the flip side, we have seen an increase on rings, vault, and parallel bars for start value and difficulty. So, you know, 50-50 swing. We're still pretty much even, if not, you know, I, we're a little lower because we're also missing some big key players right here. We got Eddie Penev, Shane Wiskus, Donald Wittenberg, Cameron Bach, Alec Yoder, Steven Nedorozic, Gage Dyer, and Brody Malone. All missing from this competition. So as we're reviewing all these clips and we're going through scores, just know that there is a lot more potential for us both 
for the whole team to also have some increased start values because these guys are the big hitters that have been on the world scene and Olympic scene previously, and they are definitely going to be missed as we accumulate the scores for this competition. But with that being said, let us kind of just jump right in to how we're going to be viewing this all today. So I made a list of all of the routines that I think are going to be really, really clutch uh, really just to paint a good picture and summation of what happened at Winter Cup uh, this past weekend. And so we're going to start with, obviously, day one. We're going to go through the top five all-arounders, and we're going to showcase and highlight kind of the drama that goes along with it. So this could take a little while because we've got a lot of videos to cover, but we'll start. This is rotation one, and we're going to have Asher... Starting it off with, uh, with some rings. We're also going to follow because the top all-rounders were um, Vitaly. Second place was Koi. Third place was Asher. Fourth place was Yule. Fifth place was Colt. So we're going to get a string of events for these guys all to, uh, to showcase and highlight. Or, you know, maybe some bad things happen. But we're going to watch it, take it all into account. And uh, yeah, right now, Asher's starting it off on rings. Just kind of where it, what I said earlier about how we have gotten stronger on rings as a country. And a big portion is due to this guy right here. Uh, rings, he ends up scoring a 14 5 6 6. And he's utilizing all of the good the inverts, the Maltese's. He's got great swing, great strength. So, you know, very strong start. You know, for. Coming out onto his first senior national team competition, Asher doing this big ring routine is a great way to confidently get the ball rolling in the direction that he wants. Let's get rid of this. All those empty seats. I know, there's too many empty seats, unfortunately. I guess there was a lot more sold tickets, but we had a lot of travel issues getting into this competition, which really goes to show the amount of adversity these guys had to handle because Texas had a freeze that happened. And let me just actually mute this too. But yeah, so Yule getting things started. Floor was a little rough of a start for him. You know, that, you know, little, little bounce on that, that's fine. Getting the jitters out. This is kind of where things got, they were good. It was a little problematic because he's supposed to connect a punch half or a full out of it. But the three and a half was an addition. And that's what we want to see from Yule. This guy has been doing great clean sets. But we need to see him getting that start value so he can start breaking onto that metal podium at the World and Olympic stage. So yeah, now we're seeing him slice and dice. And luckily he did better there than he did at the Olympic finals. So we're glad to see that he's getting that confidence there. But, you know, he's always been very good on floor. Been a world world and Olympic finalist on floor. So this isn't too big of an issue for him. But really, th him putting in this new difficulty, and even though he made a mistake and didn't make the connection, we're happy to see it because this is going to give him the potential in the future to finally break onto the scene. And, you know, he's unhappy. You can tell from that. But I'm happy to see him going for it. Because that's what we need right now from this country and from Yule specifically. Because he's going to be a big leader. So now we're going to follow it up with Vitaly. Who is literally just the clean, mean, hitting routine machine. <laughs> and unfortunately, I think this might clip off a little, a little too, uh, too short for his dismount. But, you know, great clean peach. I mean, he did, he was a little short on that handstand before he dropped in the peach, if I'm being honest. But still, it's not like they're getting much deduction off on this at all. His line is great. A little step there. But, you know, everything else, he's doing a lot of it without a deduction. And I think he netted on this a, uh, what is it, 9.2 execution. And so I think we're about to get cut out here right before his dismount. But, man, that is just impressive nonetheless. And then he ended up with a score of a 13.9 on that parallel bar routine. And we have Koi. Oh, this is... Oh, wait, wait. Nope, next I have Colt up on floor. So Colt's an interesting case. I like this. So, very interesting case right here. Where 
Colt is doing some very big difficulty, and unfortunately, it did not pay off for him. You know, front full double pike, huge pass, huge. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, all right, he's going for it, two and a half, double front, huge. Wonderful to see him putting that down because this is big gymnastics, and this is why we have this code to reward these higher start values. We're just trying to get competitive. I don't want anyone to compare this to NCAAs. This isn't NCAAs here. NCAAs, I'm cool. Hit your cool, easy, clean routines, whatever makes you best. But this is our national championship. We have countries like Russia, China, Japan that are watching this, comparing themselves like, all right, like, are we scared or is it going to be a walk in the park? And, you know, unfortunately, they're probably saying it's going to be a walk in the park right now. But if this gets better... Over the next couple years, then they're going to be like, oh man, I'm scared of Colt Walker. He's been doing this routine for three years. Now he's ready. He's been slaying it going into this next Olympic cycle. Like this is the time for him to shine. It's not right now. It's going to be the future. He's investing in it. And that's why we did the start value system the way we did. So good on you, Colt. Good on you. Even though you fell, I'm proud of you for putting it out there. All right. So done with rotation one. So now we have, what is it, Asher's in the lead with the 14-5-6-6. Yule uh, followed by Vitaly with the 13-9, followed by Koi with the 13-5-5, followed by Yule with a 13-4, and then Colt starting at a low 12-4-5. But guess what? Because this man rallies. So then we're going to follow up. Asher goes to his next event, which is obviously huge. Going to vault, doing a cost two and a half. Huge. You know, a couple steps, but guess what? This man's nothing but power. Nothing but power. So good for him. He put it down. Doesn't need to be clean because there's no one else in the country that does a harder vault than that. So reward that man f for it. And <laughs> he's making a strong case right out the gate. First two events, he's in the lead by quite a bit. Then it takes us to Yule. And he is, you know, he's, he's honestly very consistent on horse. The one thing that gets him is his dismount. And unfortunately, it gets him today, but man, this is what I like to see. Like, he's slicing dice, and he's confident. You know, it wasn't the best floor, but his headspace is like, all right, I can get this. I can get back in the game right here with this set. I mean, look at this. This is all super clean. Side travel, flossing it one at a time. And you could tell maybe just fatigue is really what's getting him right now. Personally, I think he needs to work on, uh, oh, that was, that was just fatigue. Yeah, so I guess it wasn't technically his dismount. I think he was just getting towards the end. And that is a stacked, stacked set. I think his start value is a 6-1, which not many people on Paul Morris were getting bonuses. So he's going to finish up nice and clean, of course. Just got to knock this dismount out. This will be the real true test. There we go. You know? I would like to see him one day just be able to fly that up like Alex Nador or um, Alec Yoder. That's kind of, I think if he can get the confidence on that, that dismount will never be an issue for him. But, you know, that's what these competitions are. It's time for, it's time to like reflect and say, what do I need to work on in the future? And, you know, we love Yule. Never going to stop liking Yule. We just want him to continue being the best him that he can be. So he's doing good. He's doing good and I'm happy to see it. But follow this horse set up with Koi because this is what we're talking about. This is the elite level gymnastics. And I love this kid's style, his line. The cure is absolutely beautiful. He's just got such great extension. Like, it's, he's just, there's never a time I feel like he's scraping the pommel horse. He's just got that light look. He's elevated. Zero leg separations. And so this is going to pull him a huge score. He's going with a, uh, um, gosh, where is this? We're on rotation two. Koi, 15.342. Look at that. <laughs> this man is happy. You hit a set like that. That's huge start value for him. So love to see him coming out strong. This is his first real big international competition too. So I'm I'm really pleased to see how all of this is going. And now we're back to Vitaly going in. This is second rotation still. Just finished up on P bars off the high bar. You know, 
everyone talks about how Kohei uh, Uchimura has just got that style, that mess. And I mean, he's got a lot of difficulty, but I like to think that how he has that style. He has that control factor. Where he's like, everything I'm doing, I'm doing it with intention, and I'm going to make it look good. And he's nice. He's a taller gymnast. He's got great lines. And so he's able to use that to his benefit to really show what it's supposed to look like. I mean, you can't really do anything. You can't take any deductions. Out of this. He's got an awesome disc right here. Tuck double double. You don't see that very often. Look at his drills. It's stone cold. Yeah, and he's getting juiced. I like to see that all the time. But then we follow up. We're going into we're going into the what is this? The third rotation. But I'm gonna sum up uh, the end of rotation two. So first place, Asher's leading because rings vault. He's going big. Then we got in second place, Koi with that big 15-3-4-2 on pommel horse. Then we've got in third place, a, a Vitaly's in third with a 27.3. Yule with the fall on horse, he's in fourth with a 27.189. And Colt has a 25.2. Horse wasn't his best event either, but guess what? Even with the 25.2, he still bounces back. So get ready for a lot of excitement from him. Because now we're going to take it into Asher's parallel bar routine while I get my dogs out of the room. Hey, come. It's what I get for working from home. <laughs> Alright, so Asher obviously getting a bonus for his par parallel bar routine, which is huge. He's doing... I mean, he's doing great. You can tell he's got the momentum coming from Reigns, coming from Vault. His confidence is really high. And uh, he ends up scoring a rotation three, 14.355. So execution's really not that high, but he's got the difficulty. Let's see how he finishes up. Because it looked like he had great control throughout this whole set. Oh, and he sticks it. Yeah, that was that was big. This man's feeling it. So he's going to be sitting pretty going into his fourth rotation. And so that's going to take us into... Hold on, where were we? Take us into Yule's Rings. And so he's been doing a lot of upgrades recently. Some interesting choices. Look at that. Rock in the good that Yule rolled out his own brand. So if anyone likes his style, he'll pick him up. He needs that. <laughs> There we go. All right, let's get it going. So, he has been doing Come on, you all. He's been changing things up. I don't necessarily agree with this skill right here. Whip it to handstand. Yeah, it's a D, but there's just so much built-in deduction. And, you know, I think there's better ways to upgrade. I feel like you're just going to net a one-tenth B. They definitely took three off for that D. But, you are strong. He's going he's gonna to learn some of these things. And I don't think he did it day two, but we're going to find out. Obviously strong with his Matisse, his process. And this man, I think, weighs like 60 pounds. So he's, he's really good at just utilizing that. And his whip at cross has gotten significantly better, too. Endurance doesn't seem to be an issue for him right now. Of course, maybe. Grace, he's floating. Yeah, maybe there it is. A little bent on John Hanson. You know, this is the first, like, real big competition. Season's early. Double, double tucks. We're going to see him up in that You know, not too, not too enthused. I think he knows he's got to bounce back a little bit, but we're happy to see that. And so following that, oh, we're going to go into Vitaly on floor. Because this man just, the clean beat. Let's see, what is he still doing? Yeah. Yeah. And coming up on ball for Penn State, Matt Cormier. Lay out. Ooh, right in the corner. No flag though, we're good. That was a huge ball play. Look at this. He's just kicking out and sticking left and right. That's that control that really makes him so much better. Maybe go for a half. Good control too. That's impressive. That's impressive to stick that. That's a hard one to stick. 
He's got the flare game. Nice C. This is, this is clean. This is controlled. He doesn't have a wide arm like everyone else. But he takes the nice simple B. That's the natural free. No complaints. He's just clean. Well, obviously he sticks. Obviously. The style is just so good. Back to the full. Small little hop backwards. That was really good. Cool. That's gonna net him a 14-2-5. That is that was one of the highest scores of the entire competition on floor. Very clean, very clean. So that's gonna be the end of the third rotation. We're gonna go into rotation four in just a second. But right now, obviously, Asher's in the lead with three strong events with a 45.601. Then we have in second place, uh, Koi with the four. Oh, no, no, Vitaly's on in second now with the 41.55, closely followed in third by Koi with the 41.442. Followed by Yule with the 41.305. And then Colt got a 13.25 on rings to get him up to a 38.45. Still in fifth place, but you know he's about to come into some of his best events. And we're ready to see how that goes. But going into the fourth rotation now, we have Asher Hong on high bar. And I'm sure some of you guys have already seen this, but the momentum shifts just a little bit for him. I love the use of that in my start of It's nice to see that that's a So, a little close on the Coleman. No complaints there, but he tries to adjust after because he's like, you know, I'm a little close. I don't want to tuck my knees, get the conjecture for the bent arms. Let me just send it back a little more. He just overdoes it just a little bit. So, momentum shifted. He's like, all right, I, now am I going to repeat it? Am I not? Because not only do you get the fall, but you also don't get the credit for the value of the skill. And so that's going to take away from his, uh, his start value if he doesn't repeat it. No, so he lost. He lost the one point for the fall, four tenths for the Kovacs, which is the value for it. Now he did a layout to Kachu, which is also a D and did not catch it, so he's down 2.4 on this event already. Let's see how he bounces back. Is he going to repeat? Because he's already down 1.4 or 2.4. Is he not going to do the layout to Kachi? No, he doesn't. So now he's down 2.8. Uh, so Struggle to get out of that a little bit, but working that in bar stalder. So you know, this was not the event he was hoping for, obviously, but he did have a very big cushion going into this event. And you know, it hurts to see. I felt bad for him in this moment. I think everyone else watching did. But you know, that's that's gymnastics. And He's, you know, he's obviously pushing a lot of difficulty, and this is a big step for him. So I don't blame him for going big. Some part of me feels like I wish he had repeated the skills, but if his confidence wasn't there, obviously that's coach's decision. But he's got to do what he's got to do. And so that's going to drop him down quite a bit and make this a little more competitive of a competition for the rest of the meet. But then we're going to go into vault, which Yule usually does really good on vault. Very clean, you know, can really drill it. Something happened on this one. I'm not quite sure what it was. I was hoping I could watch this and see. But you can tell he just didn't get the block that he normally wanted. He had to tuck it around. It's usually supposed to be added with another half. So he lost some difficulty there. You know, still clean, but, you know, it wasn't a fall. But, you know, it's just very uncharacteristic for Yule in this competition. I think he can... You know, and granted, day two he turns it on a little bit better, but you know, there's some big, some big gymnastics happening all around him. I know he's trying to, he's trying to stay competitive, especially with guys like Koi right here doing a Uchenko half on with a double full off. I mean, pretty much. Too. Look at that smile too, man. He knows. I like seeing this kid get juice because he's usually quiet and timid, but look at that polite bow right there. 
This kid's going to be great for a Team USA. He's coming in his first big senior competition, and he's absolutely slaying it. And he's got big upgrades. He was not doing that earlier this year, apparently. So huge to see that he's coming in strong like that. And that's going to boost him up in the standings going, uh, going into this competition. And then obviously Vitaly coming in on pommel horse. Always doing that clean gymnastics, stylish look. Now this is where his length really helps him out a lot too because it's just, you know, moving your body around when you have length, the pendulum just swings so much easier. And he's obviously taking advantage of that by slicing and dicing through this. You know, short routines, but clean, confident. And that's really the, the mentality that gets him where he needs to be. We're going to follow this up because... Obviously, Colt is about to make a comeback. This man is pissed after his first couple of events. Rage wasn't too hot of a score either, but this is where rage and anger comes into, uh, into account because you just want to smash that board, smash that table, and he's going to be doing a big hands for Randy. Huge ball, and this is elite-level gymnastics right here. This is where we're trying to go to the Olympics, trying to go to Worlds. This is a ball that will get you there, as well as Koi's Vault. So great to see that we're going big on vault nowadays because then we're going to follow that up with, uh, oh, well, that's the end of the fourth rotation. We're going to be getting ready uh, for rotation five. So obviously some drama with Asher going into that fifth rotation or going or from the fourth rotation on high bar going into fifth rotation. But now first place has changed standings. Koi is currently in first with a 56.686, followed by Asher, who has a 56.051, followed by Vitaly, who has a 55.9, and then Yule has a 54.706, and Colt has a 53.347. So he's inching his way back there, especially with that huge vault that scored him a 14.897. And uh, yeah, Asher ended up with a 10.45 on that high bar. And Koi with the 15.244 being the highest score on vault so far. Mm. Just kidding. Asher was. But of that rotation, he was the 15.244. That was higher. So we're going into the fifth rotation. Two events left. Asher just had a big mistake on high bar. How does he bounce back? We're not, we're, we're not in this for just straight scores. We're in this for character building. And he comes off strong with a full double pipe. This is big skills right here, right now. He's huge in difficulty, difficult power, double double laid out. He does not see face, although he knows he just bobbled on that transition. And they're going to deduct for that, but sometimes all you can do is laugh. And it's nice to see him still smiling. That's what I like about this kid. His charisma is just always on such a high positive note. Great player sequence, nice and easy D. And obviously he's a strong guy. He does inverts on wings, so he's going to do very low, wide on press. Unfortunately, Judge is still always taking the judge for that. But, you know, you just gotta do it. You just gotta do it. Especially when you're strong like that. It's a good play out, great stick. He is absolutely sweet despite his transition. I think he's doing a wonderful job coming from that high bar. Maybe he just has a little chip on his shoulder. Not the best dismount, but all his landings are beyond that dismount. Look phenomenal. So, great routine for him to come back from that rough, rough high bar. That scored him a 14.029. And obviously, he's getting all the bonuses on everything but high bar. So we're happy to see him bouncing back. And now it's time for Yule to bounce back a little bit because Vault wasn't his best. But now he has a chance to take it on parallel bars. And this is where he's got insane difficulty. We love to see him upgrading. And he, <laughs> with this new code of points, he did not hold back. I still wonder about his construction, but, he, you know... A routine is only as good as how you feel when you do it. And so I don't necessarily think a front one and a quarter and a front upright Suarez are the way to go to start your routine. Following it with a giant Makoots. You know, I'd rather start with the giant Makoots. That's a hard skill, but no, not for Yule. He is a champ. 
Giant Dion, he doesn't care about grip. Peach half, fifth or sixth skill. Like, this man is a monster. You know, little, little banana back there. We're fine with that because everything has been flawless up to this point. Another little banana back. You know, questionable if they could give him credit for that because he was in that handstand on one bar for a little longer. They say you need one second. Anything beyond that, you lose credit. But, you know, they gave it to him. Maybe gave him a three-tenth deduction. But wonderful set nonetheless. He only really had two bobbles. He's usually great at sticking that, but that is a marathon of a routine, and no shame for Yule for uh, not feeling a little gassed at the end of that and not getting the stick. But he's usually phenomenal at doing that. And so that was a huge set. That scored him a 15.53 um, which I think is the second highest score of the competition. Obviously, we'll get to day two when things start to get really intense after that. But we're going to make some big moves because Vitaly is still cruising. Solid everywhere. I don't think this man has had more than 13 tenths deduction on any event. But Rings, obviously, is not going to be the strongest event being a taller gymnast. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard to be a strong Rings guy. Not to mention their ice in out right now. So let's just skip through a little bit. There we go. A whole minute of interesting. I'll have to have a word with him. But yeah, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. L. Which generally judges can take a lot of production time. It's just impossible. You can't get locked arms. That was a really good. Back to my straddle plans. It's not going to be having uh, TCs or uh, invert crosses. Use your strength to your eyes. As long as you can do it nice and set, great everywhere else. This is such a different event. Really, just one of those. Uh, building all that strength in a certain way could be at your disadvantage for the to. Had a little struggle on this one, on that giant, but you know, still nothing much to take off. There's one, two, like three things maximum to work on, but sticking the dismounts really got those double doubles. Wait, he stuck his tuck double double on high bar, tuck double double on floor, tuck double double on rings. This man is just cruising. So yeah, stick game is no problem for him. I would not want to compete against him. And so this is where Colt is just turning things around. Going big on vaults. He's going into the fifth rotation. Parallel bars. Not generally an event that I've always been like, Colt, this is, this is going to be huge for you. But guess what? He comes in clutch. Scoring a 15 points. What is this? 15.055. Great control on the Makoots. And this man's making a name for himself on parallel bars. Wonderful peach, locked arm, no doubt about it. Giants got great control. Moy, you know, the easiest skill he's done, that's probably the biggest deduction he's had, is bending arm, bending his arms on the catch. Like, absolutely insane. This man is the embodiment of power. That was such a huge Bob Sar. To pelt, equally as large, great control. Healy is super smooth. Stutz, now it's dismount time. This was a phenomenal routine by Colt. Double front, one-tenth hop. Well deserved. Well deserved and way to bounce back, Colt. That's going to be bringing him a little closer. Hence why this comeback for him was so awesome to see. And, okay, so that's going to close out our, uh, our fifth rotation. Right now, let's check the standings. We have... Koi in first place with a 70.436, followed by Yule with a 70.248. That parallel bar score really boosted him up. Then we've got Asher in third place with a 70.8. So very close margin right here. Followed by Vitaly, who's in fourth place going into the final rotation with a 69.5. And then you have Colts. Just a little bit below Vitaly, 68.405. So this was, you know, we're, we got Vitaly in fourth place right now. 
And he is about to just be the stone cold killer that he is and absolutely drill this vault. Look, camera's on him. We're waiting to see what he does. Obviously, Jacob, double full, stick. Yeah, he's putting the pressure on everyone else. This was bef this was happening before all of the other guys have gone. So now they know. Wow. Vitaly, they see a score come up. He got a 14.45 on that vault. Like hardly any deductions whatsoever. And now he's sitting at an 83.95. And now that's going to take you into... Where is it? Oh, I lost it. Into Asher Hong's Pommel Horse. Lots of controversy that came from this routine because he hits this, and in my opinion, he hits it well. Unfortunately, there is a door to be opened for lots of deductions right here. They didn't give him credit for that second press the handstand. In my opinion, that was better than he actually does it most other times. That cure, you know, he, he just raged on it. No problem with the flare travel sequence into the flare spindle. And so this is where things started getting a little bit iffy for... Oh no, not yet, not yet. Great flop work, honestly. I don't really have many deductions. But here's where they hammer him. One, two, three... No. Three, four, five, six. So there were six circles that he did with what the judges would consider an extreme skew. And extreme skew is going to be a uh, three tenths deduction. So six, that's 1.8 off for just those circles that he did right there. Granted, his execution ended up being something around like a six nine, which I don't think was deserved. And they took away his second scissor handstand, which I don't think was deserved. But, you know, the judges, he, it, he could do that skill with a little more swing. Like it's obvious that they showed strength. And in the code of points, they say that it needs to show swing. So Asher's definitely going to go back to the drawing board with that one because that only scored him a 12.949, which he has so much difficulty. He even got bonus on top of that. Even without one of his skills, he had even more start value, but they didn't give him credit for it. So that is going to put him behind Vitaly with an 83.029. And then that's going to take us into Yule, who, you know, was in second place going into the next rotation. And he's got to do high bar. And it gets, it's awesome because he's doing new skills. He has done a very easy routine the whole past quad. And I was so happy to hear that he was going gung-ho and wanted to put in some big upgrades. So that was supposed to either be, I think that was supposed to be a full top. Ended up being a half talk one on giant. You know, the fact that he's still on the bar is incredible. The fact that he's about to do a Coleman, which he has not, with, you know, after something where your whole body, your grip is hurting, and it's struggling. You're feeling that in your forearms. And he's still putting down these big releases that are new to him. You know, he hasn't been doing very, uh, Pike Takachi his whole career. He's now added a Coleman and a Pike Takachi after a fumble full time. So endurance is definitely an issue at this point in time because when something like that happens, your mind scrambles, it drains you more than you normally think. But the fact that he still put this routine down, you know, granted it wasn't the routine he wanted. He was hoping he could take the victory, but lost the credit for the full talk, kind of was exhausted, didn't have the best execution after that. You know, it is what it is, but, you know, I just have to commend him for putting in all these upgrades because that's what we've been wanting to see from him for quite some time. And now to the man that has all the power, Colt. And, you know, it's strange because he only did seven skills. Maybe there's an endurance issue here, or maybe he just thought that I just need one score that is going to get me uh, one to the national team to strike to fit and play safe. Yeah, best day, but you know, I love this man's high bar. He gets so yeah. much hype on his releases. Yamawaki, the Coleman, the Takachev, another Takachev. Like, he is a great high bar worker, and his start value could be so much higher if he just put in 
three more skills. I can't say much. I'm not sure. Preparation has been difficult for a lot of people. COVID within the past couple of months. Having this practice. I know he was on that list for the beginning of his NCAA season. But, you know, I just wanted to give him some props because he is doing big skills. He has the potential. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot of great gymnastics from him in the future. And uh, Koi also did high bar. He got a 13-1. Colts got a 13-1. Yule with the 11.4. Netting him, well, netting the results where Vitaly's on top with an 83.95. Asher with the dramatic pommel horse finish with a, oh no, no, Koi in second with the 83.536. Also with big, you know, he was clean on the events that he's not proficient at. But horse and um, vault, man, that, those are two events that he is going to make a strong case on for the future. And then following in third, we had Asher with a 83.029 with the dramatic pommel finish. Yule in fourth with an 81.648. And then Colt came back with a 81.502. So very happy to see how that all panned out. So that was the all-around competition. That was day one. Lots of great you know lots of great things happening you know there's a lot of missing gymnastics but i think when i look at this as a whole if there are athletes that are trying to make a case for the world or the olympic stage in making a five man team if you are good on floor pommel horse and high bar start investing in those events because those are our weaknesses and if you can become good on those events we're going to be seeing a wonderful team competition when we go out against other countries because that's where we have the most ground to make up or on those events. And so with that being said, we can now take this into a little bit more of the power, a little bit more of the style. We have a uh, day two competition where we're getting our points. This is where individuals are going to shine. We want to see who is the best on each event, who can get the most points, and really – who is going to be making cases for individual medals in the world? So unfortunately on floor, we don't get too many routines that are medal potential, but we obviously have to showcase the first place winner, Ian, Ian Lasik Ellis. And he does a wonderful, this is not easy by any means. Is this going to be beating um, all the Russians? No, but... I like where he's starting. This is his freshman year for, I think this is his freshman year for Stanford. But very clean, very powerful, and you know, great landings. And there is a lot of potential. I think he has upgrades that he can do. And I always love seeing when four guys can be flares. Because you have to be stuck with a B press or a C wide arm. Or even if you have to just do a, a triple Russian. I feel like you just don't get as much flare, hence the flare, into your uh, floor with you. But wonderful control nonetheless on that uh, right on. Very low. I'm curious if the judges actually took a tenth off for that or not. But two and a half layout. He spots the floor very well as he goes into that entry layout. Back double full. Very clean stuck landings. Now time for the dismount. And I think this was not quite as good as the dismount. But hey, it still won him the first place spot. Got him lots of points to, uh, you know, to 20 or got him lots of points to make a strong case for him for the future. And so, you know, this wasn't. And so we're now that was that was all I really could showcase on floor. We did not have too many highlights. We had a lot of mistakes, a lot of people going f for big skills, which I commend them, but I'm not going to show uh, a bunch of people falling on high difficulty right now. You know, I figured I'd start with Colt and he'll be my guinea pig and I hope he's not mad at me because I really mean it from the best of my, from the deepest part of my heart that I want him to keep pushing that difficulty because I think he's going to make a great case in the future, but... We're going to just also, I know, I guess I just said <laughs> we were going to not watch anyone fall, but Koi was so good on day one, and he is still so good on day two, because I, okay, what I wanted to show was he's throwing in upgrades from his already huge set that he did on day one. Wonderful hand, uh, scissor handstand, great cure. This is where he starts getting big. He's throwing the Busnari in, and 
you know, he fights it. <laughs> he fights it. He went for it, though, and this is what I like to see. Because that is going to be a huge routine. And, you know, you can't make an omelet if you don't break a couple eggs. So he's breaking his eggs now. He's doing wonderful in terms of just throwing out the big skills. I've seen him make that Busnari many a times. He's not going to repeat it, of course. He's just going to go finish this routine, which is still already stacked. Because he is just that good. He's got the circle. He's got the confidence. And these are basics for him. And that's when you can make hard gymnastics look easy, that is the goal. And so, Koi, you are succeeding. Keep pushing that. I want to see that boost Nari in a couple months at uh, championships. Honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing it throughout your NCAA career. But I know playing it safe is generally the move. But, you know, unfazed. This man can hit well when he wants to. You know, he... Threw in the upgrades, he fell, that's fine. You're going to get that, and you're going to be a, a master of the Busnari soon. But, you know, who did have a better day, day two? Yul Moldauer. Pommel Horse, I love to see it. He ended up in second place with his fall on day one with this hit Pommel set. And so he's slicing and dicing as he always does. Great E-Russian. Time for his E-flop. And so he ends up scoring a 14.689. And that's, that, that is the type of score you want a team, com a competitor on your team to have. His endurance seems to be going a lot better right now. Flare work is good. Not quite as skewed. Eh, he's got a little skew, but dismount, little struggle. But hey, we'll take that. He is in better form today than he was day one and i love seeing him bounce back great to see him excited about that routine as well so you'll improving and this is where individuals start shining alex Diab didn't have the greatest routine day one but this is where difficulty is being pushed to the max Let's go, Diab. no one has a closer start value to on, no, Diab. Strong, i think asher's the next closest but Diab is just going ham on this set. Let's see. He is just a ball of muscle, I swear. Azarian Plange. I don't think I've seen anyone in the U.S. do that since uh, Brandon Wynn or Alex Lindor. Oh, yeah! And Azarian Maltese, very clean. He's going to do an invert, which I love that they upgraded him as the season. Giant. We'll check 110. No worries. We'll take the pass for days. Back up by straight plans. Little arms coming Come in. One tenth, but hey, that's good. You're netting three tenths of arms into a back kip Maltese. This is they don't can't make this up, guys. This is this is hard. I don't know how he hasn't exploded at this point in time. Like the amount of squeezing. He has to do on, to get yeah, himself go. into these positions yeah. is Good insane. Right. Into the half and half yeah. out, stuck. This is a elite level ring team right here, and no one else has got the level of difficulty that this man has in the US. We got a nice close face shot of that at the end too. <laughs> so love seeing him coming out and winning rings. That score got him a 14. Oh no 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 sorry not a 14. That's way too low. That got him a 15 1 4 5. So we love to see it. But I can't talk about that. Let's and, go Asher. Uh, throw Asher's name out there without watching Asher do his stuff on the rings as well. Nice job. Because day two was better than his day one. He scored. Go, was it day one? He went 14 5 6 6. Day two, he goes 14 point seven six six. boy. Nah, he's looking very strong. I hope the judges don't take as much deduction on the kid as they used to, but they, they can be hard. They can say three tenths for some of these kicks if they really want to. Wrong, wrong. You know, great to see him doing that invert. Just a little Come bit on. high, but I, I don't think I would have taken that one in the right here, man. Let's get it. Come on. He's got great control in these handstands. Double double laid out stick. Like that is huge. That is huge. 
and I'm, you can't, I mean, that's a big score. That is a big score to be getting a uh, 14 7 6 6. I mean, he's obviously going to be one of the best all arounders we have, and uh, he's going to need a little bit more uh, refining on a couple things. You know, Horse and High Bar being the two that got him, that he got hit on the most, but he has nothing he really needs to change for rings at all. And if he keeps doing this routine, I imagine how easy this routine is going to be for him as we move into the next coming years. Like if he can already do it this well, it's just insane. Right, and then we got Yule. Time for him. Upgrade a little bit, score a little better today than he did on day one. A little bit better. He got a 14 1 1 6. And so he still did the whip it handstand. Honestly, it looked like he didn't bend his arms nearly as much on that. Even on that next whip it, he still bends his arms. And so he's opening the door for some deduction. Uh, I feel like he can use his strength. His strength. Because he is so strong. To be just a little more efficient and not incredibly these small, unnecessary one time deductions. Maybe they're even taking a little bit more. But, no, I'm, I'm not gonna go talk to him about the team. He's gonna do what he wants. He's still really like that. He used to drop down so low, stretch out every muscle fiber in his back, and he is doing that so with so much more control this year than he has previous years. So struggling on that handstand a little bit. But this is what I like to see. He upgraded with a double double laid out. A little short landing. Might have been a little gas, but hey, he's putting in some more difficulty trying to get that over 10. In my opinion, is it worth it to do a double double laid out where he generally is very good at sticking his tuck double double, which won't incur deductions? Yes, but hey, you know, I'm not gonna say no to him working that for the next couple of years and being a strong guy to get him. Because if he could start sticking that as much as he sticks his tuck double double, more power to you. We're in it for your grind right now. So now we're gonna. I want to just show James Riley because I felt bad. He came in sixth in the all around, so we didn't get to see much of him. But he is one of my favorite gyms to watch, and he is great on rings. Back up rise, Maltese, push pumps, planche. His positions are great. He is very good at doing that invert. His head was below the rings. And I, I just I don't think he had the competition he wanted, which is why he ended up in sixth. Because last Winter Cup, he ended up in second. But, you know, he's doing great gymnastics, and he has some very high-level difficulty. No one does a straight straight like that. <laughs> Riley just has some strange strength, but he is so good at it, and he needs to use that. And that's why he's being showcased on rings. He came in fourth on rings with a 14-1-5 on this routine. And he's got good handstands. He seems like he's very much in control. Double-double, off back, like... That is a very clean routine, and we'll take 14, uh, what is that, 14, what did I just say? I don't know what he scored. <laughs> oh, there it is, 14-1-5, there we go. I'll take that all day. That is a great team score for rings. So following that, I do also want to showcase a little bit of Colin, because, you know, I'm biased. I love this man. He is just, you know, got a part of this man. Had a lot of health struggles last year. So him coming back out here and putting on the performance that he did and being able to do a hard ring routine. He is about to do Zarian Maltese. He is one of the few, there was only, I think, three or four people that got bonus to be an elite level start value world finishing competition or world finalist uh, start value. And he was one of them. This is a hard routine, and he didn't necessarily get what he should have. You know, he's got a little overgrip. He had his swings aren't quite as clean as everyone else, but you know, I needed to just commend him for coming back out here, doing some hard gymnastics. No way in my wildest dreams could I have been able to do backwards, Azari uh, Maltese, and all this Nakayama work that he's doing. Like, this man came back and he made a very strong case for him to be a contender as we move forward in this quad. And he's going to get a little bit more shine as we move into vault as well. But 
Astra is going to be the one that starts us off. And so this was an interesting ball. He does his pause two and a half, which no one else does. This is hard. Like, this is big gymnastics. This is what makes you a, an Olympian or a world team finalist. So you see how he just a little short on this, on this uh, cause two and a half. So, you know, the judges gave him credit for it, all right? But let's slow this down. Did he, is his body facing forward, sideways? Because if it is, it shouldn't get credit for the next half. And so, all right, in my opinion, this is a cause double full. Probably not a cause one and a half or cause two and a half. But, you know, he's sneaky. He's tricky. He's spinning his ankles and he's landing forward. And the judges, you know, when it happens fast, it's harder to tell. Obviously, they don't have the stop action uh, playback motion. And he makes a strong case that that was a cause two and a half. We just have to battle. Sometimes you got to fool the judges. And I know he wasn't happy with that vault, and he wasn't sure if he was going to get credit for a cause double full or a cause two and a half. But granted, even if it was a cause double full, that was still harder. That was equal to a lot of the Stanford vaults that we're going to be seeing later in this video. Which, speaking of which, uh oh, wrong thing. Sorry, guys. Koi, obviously. Yeah, he had a better vault, almost sticking it, or in my opinion, pretty much sticking it. Day two, or day one. But and he's just trotting into this thing. Half on, double full. Oh my god, what do you mean? He pretty much all... His score has varied a lot on that vault. He got a 15.244 day one, and he got a 14.994. And honestly, I thought that was like exactly the same thing he pretty much did day one. I would give him maybe one-tenth more uh, for day one than day two, but... Wow, you know, good on him, man. When he makes that vault look so easy, and that is not easy at all. Consistent, that's for sure, especially with his landings. That's that's half the battle of vault. And obviously, we're gonna showcase Colt day two vault. He did even better on day two than he did day one. He's going to be fifteen point two four seven. And look at that, one small little step. Great control, great height. I swear, this man's going to be able to do another half out of that soon. And so he ended up in uh, third place. So Asher was first, Koi was second, and Colt was third. So we're also going to give a little more shine to Riley for his vault. Another handspring Randy. He's uh, doing it before Colt was. Not that that matters at all, but I think he's been helping that Stanford team learn how to do this vault because he just does it so well and so easily. Huge power, takes it straight up. Small little hop forward as well. Great control on the landing. Stanford is just, they are killing the vault game. No one in the NCAA is going to be able to touch that one. They're going to get a very big push in their team value just for the number of uh, five, six vaults they have. And so I'm going to showcase Colin again. He didn't have the best landing. But, you know, being able to just do a 5-6 vault is so difficult. And I'm just so happy to see him out here still pushing some, some very high difficulty gymnastics. And, you know, this isn't a 5-6 vault. This is a 5-2. But, you know, you just can't argue with the cleanliness that Curran put and the stick that this man <laughs> is really uh, showcasing. Great form, kicks out of that, drills the landing. Yeah, be happy with that one, Kern. Be very happy. That He needs to start doing a Uchenko triple. He kicked out of that way too early. And so we have another Stanford gymnast in the same ball as Coy, the half on double four. Just a testament to Stanford's dominance on the ball. This is just hard gymnastics. Could have done the Randy out of that. I know he's working it, and we're going to be seeing that in the future. But just huge, huge amount of power. And I love seeing Taylor out there. We didn't get to see too much of him on this event, throughout this event. But I'm going to showcase his high bar because he's just got such a fun high bar. So Alex Diab, handspring double pike on vault. Doing a Veronic. 
This is also 5-6 vault, super hard, super difficult. It's also working the half out of it as well. So I'm excited to see how that's going to translate in the future. But absolutely huge vault. And I just, you know, he didn't do well on day one. But, you know, he really came through on day two and put a good strong case uh, to make it on to, uh, I don't know, just to, to put his name out there and say, hey, Team USA is doing five, six vaults. There is a large string of them that are doing it. Let's keep this rolling. Let's let's scare the rest of the country with our vaults because we love to see it. And probably my favorite routine of the entire competition, Kern Phillips parallel bar routine. Front up rise, Diom and a half. Front up rise, Diom into a front up rise, Makuts. Insane. I like I. If you don't know what you're seeing, this is elite level gymnastics. This is the biggest start value of the competition. No one has the amount of difficulty, and I want to see him go compete internationally. I want to see him make a name for himself, and I want to see this guy get a parallel bar medal in the world or Olympic stage. Because him and Yule are the top guys on parallel bars, but Kern's got Yule beat right now. And that was ginormous. Obviously, he won with a 16.643 on parallel bars, followed by Yule, who we're going to watch right now, with a... Yule did way better day two than he did day one, but he scored a 15.793. Absolutely insane difficulty that we're still going to see. Instead of the front prize work, Yule does the giant work. And this is absolutely insane I his construction still confuses me this is such an easy skill you could do that later save your energy for the hard skills this also easy skill save your energy what you're about to do right now is so hard giant McCoot flawless I love the technique too he doesn't shift his grip like he does on his giant Dion Obviously a little bobble there, but that's fine. You don't see anyone do a giant Makuts like Yule does. Struggled with his peach, uh, his peach work a little bit. Maybe the grip isn't what he was hoping it would be, but he still pulled through. Maybe you should do them earlier, Yule. Just my suggestion. Do the front one and a quarter, front up rest Suarez later. Maybe your grip will be a little better for your peach game. It's okay, I'm fine. We're all fine. Giant Suarez looked fine though. You didn't have any grip issues there. And then how do you finish on the dismount? There he is. The stick master Yule coming in clutch like we know he knows how to. So great to see Yule bouncing back, having a much stronger day two. And uh, that's going to take us into high bar, which, you know, it's one of our weaker events. But Jack Freeman here makes a very strong case to be the best. I mean, he is, he won high bar. There's no denying this, but his level of cleanliness is unparalleled. He's got more difficulty than Vitaly, but he's just as clean. And so that's what makes him such a strong competitor on high ball. And you know, he didn't have the best day one, 13-3-5, but to bounce back from day one with a 13-3-5, come in with day two a 14-5, that is a, that is a big change right there. And that's Mark Williams' MO with Williams. Let's be clean. But the Coleman, you really don't see many guys doing uh, Coleman's for Williams. So I like to see that and it connects the straddle to the pike. This is, this is much better than I was anticipating. Way to go, Jack. Jam work, very clean. I like it. Put in your difficulty early, the releases early, and then make the rest Stylish show of artistry. Uh, great stalder in the home of this mount. Oh, he's really good at their sticks. Half and half out. Of course he does. Of course he does. A 14-5 is a huge score for Jack Freeman to land him in the first place spot. But we're going to get a little bit more shine for Kern Phillips as we go. He had a huge curl bar set. And this is his day one high bar. I wanted to showcase the better one. Day two did not score as well. It was very close. Day one, 13-7-5-7. Seven, seven. 
13657. But he does the big high flying releases, so we need to reward him for it. He starts with the Yamawaki into a Casina. Little sloppy, but he is putting it down. Coleman, I mean, I haven't, I did not see nearly enough Casinas this competition as I should have. But it's all right. We were lacking Shane and we were lacking Brody. So great to see Kern coming in here. He could throw a little bit more difficulty in other places. But full talk, great execution, very, very close to the hands. Not as good there, but comparable to the Flying Giant, he could take out, but hey, he does it. It's deduction free. I think he's got some upgrades in the future. And closing it out with the stuff. I, mean, I, I liked just seeing the high flying releases from this guy. So that's going to take us to another high flyer. We have Taylor Burkhart, who is doing, in my opinion, just the coolest high on the team. It's just so much fun to watch because no one is doing the releases that he is doing. Wallstrom right there. Yamalock with a full twist. Then upgraded this code. That's an F value. Love to see it. No one else has done that. And then he does a Yamawaki to a straddle to a Pike to Kachi. Great connection. Very exciting. Very difficult. No one connects Yamawaki's to Takachas, but Taylor Burkhart does. But he's not done yet because he still has a link in his back pocket. Like insane. And to do that so late. It just goes to show the level of comfortability he has with these high level pieces. And then it's like right into his dismount. He could throw a couple more skills in there to get his start value up. But he's doing the big releases. The little artistry and uh, the cleanliness of some other skills will come later. But my gosh, was that just not fun to watch? And I gotta showcase one of the only few guys that got bonus in on high bar in this competition. Garrett from Air Force. It was awesome to see him throw in some big releases as well. Like I said, not going to be enough uh, casinos, but nice little uh, one on work right there. Without talking, but now he's going to start getting it. Picking up the speed, he's got a great tap. Casino, caught him a little late, a little flex in the leg separation. But that's fine. I want to just see some people flying over the bar and catching in a very dangerous and scary way. That's what I want. It's a, you gotta get the adrenaline rushing. And I feel like this routine is definitely getting my adrenaline pumping. And lost. It's still a very short routine. And a lot of these guys aren't doing full high level difficulty 10 skill routines. But that right there was no joke. He, well, that was. That was actually a big. Big routine. I think he could still put in a couple more skills to make it a little more difficult. But I loved watching it. I had fun. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to my Michigan guys. Obviously, Paul Judah, all the Michigan guys couldn't make it until the second day of competition since Dallas got locked in. They canceled all their flights. And so Michigan is one of the schools that just could not find a way to get there before them first day of competition, but Paul Judah, one of the great all-around workers, he actually would have been second had he had this day of competition on day one, and he has just great execution on high bar as well, scoring a 14-2, but his all-around score was an 83.85, and we really wish we could have seen two days of competition from him, he still landed a spot on the national team, I mean, that was, he got zero deduction for that jam. Great control and just wonderful execution. He has some upgrades that he can throw in. And he's just ready to travel and everything. He's ready to put it in. So we're hoping to see uh, at championships this next year in a bigger, higher star value team. But that was awesome. Closing it out with the stick. We have one more guy that actually got a bonus on high bar, and that's Crew Bold coming in with the first time. He ever competed this routine with the casino. He had some issues with his uh, thumb, and so he had not been training this casino until it was showtime. And boy, did he do it well. Honestly, I thought this was one of the better routines on high bar. He was 
Yes. No, that was a huge casino. Maybe a couple tenths off on it, but I mean, that's a deep value skill. Maybe a couple tenths on that Coleman, but you know, he's netting more than uh, more than the values of the skills. Good layoff to Kaji, still a couple tenths. I can see probably what needs to be worked on is his uh, toes on his tap. They keep separating, but the judges really can't see that very well from the side end. It looks like we are going to have to render for a second as we figure out our final team. But, you know, this is great to see him out And it looks like that's all we're going to see from... Come on now. We're just going to wait this out one sec because crew deserves the honor of having this routine finished. I'm going to just reload it, guys. Because I need to commend. He hadn't done this routine, and he comes out Winter Cup and showcases it. I thought he had great, great start value, and, you know, execution will come later. But it looks like it does not want to finish. Right, we're just going to skip a couple of things. And, you know, obviously I said this was the first time he had done this routine. So it turns will definitely You can see on that dismount a little short. But, hey, props to you, crew. You just made my highlight list right there. So awesome, awesome stuff. I mean, we we had a great competition. We had a lot of highlights, especially on day two. But there are things that could have been a lot better throughout the whole competition. It was awesome to see people pushing start value. Even though it didn't pay out in their benefit, it's an investment for the future. They're going to be hitting these big routines. And 100% hands down, Vitaly, you did a wonderful job finishing out this competition. You earned it. You beat everyone. Even though other people had start values, you actually beat them by even more. So keep doing you. Everyone just be the best selves that you can possibly be. And you're going to make this sport so exciting to watch. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to take some time to answer all the questions in the chat that I've been missing. But I just want to close it out here and say thank you guys for tuning in. And until next time, I can't wait to break down some more gymnastics with you guys. All right. All right, so now we're going to get into some questions. Thank you guys for being so patient with me. Mm. I know I just steamrolled you guys, but there was a lot of gymnastics to cover, and I didn't have much time to... Uh, to bounce back and forth between uh, the video and the chat. So just want to see what you guys got. So yeah, actually you guys just did a lot of commenting on the video. I like it. So let me, let me just throw out some questions for you guys. Uh, what did you guys think? What was your opinion? Are there things that you didn't agree with my opinion on in terms of the execution or the bonus system? Or who was showcased? Did I not show enough of some people? These are kind of the things that I want to hear. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comments. I'm always trying to improve myself. So if I could be better at commentating in any way, this is where I learn and grow is you guys giving me the feedback to help me be better in the future. Because all I want to do is showcase gymnastics, give it the shine that it needs. So I appreciate you all tuning in. I'm going to close it out here, um, but thank you guys so much, and I can't wait to do this.